Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. I'm going to show you how I put together this fun winter ski lodge theme for my coffee bar in my house using supplies from the Target Dollar Spot. So you might recognize this. This is from my last coffee bar. I had a Santa hot cocoa bar for Christmas and this was just an old thrift flip sign that I got at Goodwill and I've actually remade it a couple of times. I obviously used too much hot glue when I put that Santa on there. So I kind of had a mess taking that off, but the heat gun worked the best out of anything that I tried there and got off most of the extra glue. And I am going to kind of just paint over the whole sign with just some white acrylic paint, a couple of coats of that to cover up what I did before, just to give me a blank canvas to make a new sign for my coffee bar. Um, a lot of you guys seen, um, I redid my coffee bar a couple months ago. I took a $12 thrift slip item and made it into kind of a built-in coffee bar in my kitchen. And so I love to decorate it for the holidays. This is the color we're going to use today. It's called Caribbean Blue. It is just an acrylic paint that I get at Target. I did two coats of white to cover up what I had on there before. And then I'm going to do two coats of the Caribbean Blue too. This is just kind of like a palette sign um, that's attached on the back. It has some nice hooks to hang it. And I really wanted to reuse this sign because... Um, I had it hanging on my coffee bar already. I've already got nails in place. It fits perfectly. So I kind of wanted to show you here on my Cricut Design Space how I design my stencils because I want to do a hand-painted sign. So I'm going to use rectangles um, to represent the slats on my sign. I measured them. And I really only want the words to be on two rows instead of all three. And so I'm going to do two different boards. And on this bottom one, I only want it to be, I want it to be smaller and over to the right. So I'm just kind of lining it up exactly how I want it. And then adding text. I really like these DTC fonts, they're my favorite. So I'm going through a couple of those to try to figure out which one I like the best, something fun. And I'm gonna call this the Blue Moose Coffee Company. I think that sounds fun because I made my sign blue because I have a coastal farmhouse, have lots of blues in my house. I kind of thought about doing all black and white on this project and making it very farmhouse, but I had to incorporate a little bit of blue. So I thought I would include that in my coffee company title too. I love making a fun little sign for the top of my coffee bar. Whenever I do two different lines like that, I do like to switch the font up. I think it makes it look a little bit more fun. So I got that kind of how I would like it. So I'm just going to go in now and just delete my rectangles because those were just for reference. And then I'm going to use my Cricut to cut this out on stencil vinyl. So once you have it on there, you can kind of like, you know, move it around. I want a little bit of extra stencil um, to also cover up the sign so that I can um, have a nice clean paint job. And I cut it out. I get this stencil vinyl on Amazon. I really love it. I can post a link below. And I am just going to weed out that design. And then we can use this stencil to hand paint the sign. I've reused the sign. This is the third time I've reused the sign since I got it this fall at the thrift store. It was my Farm Fresh Pumpkin sign and then my Santa Hot Cocoa Bar sign. And so now it is having another life. I love a nice wood sign and I love hand painting them. I think they look so great. In a perfect world, I wouldn't have to redo the same size, but I do have a fairly small house, so I don't have a lot of room for storage. 
And so this is it. I'm using my paper transfer paper. I get that on Amazon as well too, to transfer my stencil to my wood sign. I kind of have something planned that I'm gonna do over on the left part of the sign. So I'm gonna kind of um, align all my text over on the right side. So just lining that up and scraping it down with my Cricut scraper and then removing my paper transfer paper. I kind of made it a little too big. It's overlapping the second board where I also want to do some hand painting. So I'm just gonna use an X-Acto and cut off the excess there. And then I can go in with my coffee company sign. And I just think it's really fun. I've done a couple where I've done like coffee companies or chocolate companies. I think that's a really fun little thing. I thought about maybe putting our name on there and kind of personalizing it a little bit more, but I have a plan to put a moose on the sign. So I thought it would be really fun to name my coffee company after this moose. And just putting that second stencil on there and a little painter's tape in between. And we are ready to hand paint this. Now I'm gonna go over it first with ivory. I'm um, actually, I forgot, I seal it with Mod Podge first. So this is just a thin coat of Mod Podge, matte Mod Podge from the Dollar Tree. And then I dry that. That's gonna help um, avoid bleeding on my hand painted sign. Now I'm going in with ivory acrylic paint. And basically um, I'm just doing kind of a rough base coat of the ivory because what I want it to look like is I wanna make it look like a wood grain. Um, and I did this technique on my Farm Fresh Pumpkin sign. I really liked how it turned out. So I'm gonna try to do that again to make it look like it was a wood sign that was stenciled and then painted over blue. So to get that effect, I'm gonna use some of this. It's Antique Wax by Waverly. And I just drag it in one direction with my foam brush and it gives me this really fun like wood grain over my stencil and I really like how this technique turns out. I think it's really fun. So I'm gonna do that for both lines. I got a wood mousse from the Target Dollar Spot and I thought that this would kind of go together with the wood mousse and kind of go with like a lodge feel because I want to do everything like winter ski lodge for this. I think it'll be really great for the rest of winter. So just dry that a little bit and then I'm peeling off my stencils. I did have a little bit of bleeding. Maybe I wasn't super careful, but nothing I can't fix. And you know me, I like to distress everything. So of course I'm going to distress this anyway. So I am just weeding out the excess vinyl and trying to clean up the little spots where I did have a little bit of bleeding and no big deal. Now when you use the Mod Podge first, you can kind of get like um, a little bit of a raised surface. Um, and so I am kind of sanding. My, some of my letters were a little bit rough, but again, I think that kind of goes with the coastal feel. And then this is distressing. I'm just using a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and a little bit of ivory acrylic paint and going all over. If I get too much distressing on there, I just follow that up with a baby wipe and get it right to the right level of distress that I like. And I'm really glad I used this Caribbean blue color because it is ma it matches some of the DIYs that I did in my last video. My coastal winter DIYs, I use this color and it's kind of on the same wall as those DIYs and so it's gonna go together. This is the mousse that I got at Target Dollar Spot. They have all these things on clearance right now and I'm just going to my saw and I'm gonna cut the legs so that I cut the stand off. And the green plaid little scarf doesn't match too well so I'm just gonna remove that fabric with heat gun and um, just paint that with that same um, Caribbean blue color. Um, just because I can't really easily take that part of the mousse off and that'll bring a little bit of blue into our little blue mousse, right? And I think he's really cute and I'm gonna put him like down in the bottom corner of my coffee bar sign. And we're ready to attach them. This time I'm gonna try not to use so much hot glue. 
And right down like that, and I think this sign turned out really sweet. I really love it. And I'm really glad that I did decide to bring in a little bit of blue. I really love any color of blue and I love to incorporate it in my house whenever I can. And I do go in here with a little bit of that ivory and also distress my little mousse as well. And it's ready to go. I love this winter lot ski lodge stuff at the Target Dollar Spot. Get to your Target now because they're clearancing them all out to get their Valentine's Day stuff out. So I got the ski lodge sign on clearance, half price. And then I got these great little uh, snowflake signs as well. I'm gonna use two of these for my coffee bar. I have two shelves, so I'm gonna do one of those on each one, and then I'll use the extra one for my Winter Lodge tear tray that I made in a previous video, because I am gonna steal um, something from it later, and then I'm gonna move that to my kitchen table, and it's all gonna coordinate. I also got this great lantern at the Dollar Tree. Isn't it cute? I don't have to do anything to any of these. They are all perfect and ready to go for my coffee bar. This is another Target Dollar Spot find. It's a little like ski chalet. And I got this half price at Target Dollar Spot as well. I kind of want to remove the reef though, just because I felt like it made it a little bit Christmassy. So I'm just using my heat gun to melt the hot glue. And um, I kind of wanted to add a little bit of blue to this shelf as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the roof of that, that same Caribbean blue, just to bring in another pop of color. But you can totally leave it white. It's really cute white, cause it kind of looks like snow. But you know me, I wanted a little bit of blue and I kind of wanted to make this little ski chalet like um, my own. So just a rough coat, that way I won't have to distress it. And I'm just gonna dry that with my heat gun. Now I wanted to make a little sign to go above the front door. So I'm using one of these big popsicle sticks and a little bit of antique wax by Waverly staining it. Then I'm gonna cut out a little wood sign to go above the door. I kinda wanted to have like jagged edges, so I'm just using some scissors and just kinda cutting off really rough cuts. If it splits the wood a little bit, that's just gonna add a little bit more character. And then I wanna use just a white paint pen. And then I'm just gonna personalize this with our last name and the word Lodge. It's a little hard to paint white over the Antique Wax by Waverly, but I'm just gonna go in and do a second coat and then that turned out really good. And it's just a little fun personalized detail to go with this little ski chalet right above the door where the reef was. And that is how that one turned out. So cute, I love it. Okay, up next, I stole these snowshoes from my winter tear tray. I don't think they're gonna work on my kitchen table, so gonna use them. And then I also got this little black tree at the Target Dollar Spot for half off, and um, the snowshoes were half off too. Then look at the ski lift. I got this half off too at the Target Dollar Spot. I love it, it's so cute. And I thought it would be the perfect holder. I have a couple of ingredients left over from my hot cocoa bar and my son really enjoyed the hot cocoa bar. And so I thought I would just put them on the ski lift chair and that's gonna be a fun addition to the coffee bar. Then I also got this at the Target Dollar Spot. It's a snowy Christmas tree and it doesn't look real Christmassy. So I thought it might work as well. I always like to personalize some mugs for whatever theme I'm going with for my coffee bar. So I picked up four black coffee mugs at Dollar Tree. It's a great way to make your own little mugs that'll go perfectly with your theme. And I'm just gonna use my Cricut and some Dollar Tree vinyl to personalize these. So I'm just gonna make four squares and about the size that I wanted for my cups and just making them black so I can kind of get the feel. And then I have a subscription to Cricut Design Space, so I'm just gonna go in there and find some simple mountain creatures um, that we can cut out like a silhouette to put on the front of each one of the mugs. And so, of course, I thought bear first, so I found a great image of a bear on there. Just kind of kind of make it white, just to make it contrast and size it about how I want. 
And then of course I wanted to do a mousse. So I searched for a mousse and I was able to find um, a really great mousse silhouette as well. And if you don't have a subscription design space, you can usually find silhouettes of most creatures um, pretty easily online for free. Then I had to hit up my son and say, give me, give me a couple more um, mountain skin <laughs> creatures, animals. And he told me he wanted a mountain goat on one. So going through, trying to find one, I found one that, this one that I thought was going to work. And then he's like, that is the wrong kind of goat. It's supposed to be a mountain goat. So even though I thought that would work, I'm just going to have to use one of these mountain goat ones and try to modify it. This one's two colors. I tried to delete a layer, but it took away some of his details. So I just take them together and I weld them together and that's gonna merge them together into one color. Flip it so it's going the same direction as my other creatures. And that turned out really well. So I'm gonna delete that goat. And then he also suggested a wolf. So we're gonna do a wolf silhouette. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these all out of Dollar Tree vinyl in that black and white like buffalo check um, pattern. I think that will look really cute with the rest of the mountain ski lodge theme. I use that a lot in my um, ski lodge tear tray that I'm gonna have right next to it on my kitchen table. And so I think it's all gonna coordinate really nicely. So I'm just deleting all of my squares. I don't need those. And we are ready to cut. You can always drag these if you don't wanna do like a strip like that. I kind of wanted to do just like a square. And we're ready to cut. Now this is the Dollar Tree vinyl. You know I have so much problems with this, but I have it, so I'm gonna use it. It's really cute, but you'll see. I had problems, so I'm gonna weed it on my mat because I cannot get it off, it's stuck. And I wasn't even using a new mat this time. Oh, I have so much trouble with this Dollar Tree vinyl. The mat just sticks like this. Let me show you, like this. And I'm like, oh no, how am I gonna get this off? Because they turned out great, but I can't even get them off so that I can put them on transfer paper. It just shreds it. So I'm like, oh, these are kind of all one pieces. I'm just gonna use them like stickers. And so that's what I do. I just pull them off and just start popping them on my cups. And I really love that against the black cup. At first I thought I was gonna do white cups, but I really like the contrast of the black because I have like a white shiplap wallpaper um, behind my coffee bar. And I think it's gonna be a really nice contrast. And it's gonna bring in that black and white buffalo check that I used on my tear tray. So just getting all those animals attached. It's so easy to personalize and make your own coffee mugs. And a lot of times the vinyl will stay on really well, even with hand washing. And that's how they turned out. Now our last DIY today is gonna be a little banner. I got these great ornaments all at Target on clearance. They're all Christmas ornaments. I got a little ski lift a snowflake, and some snowshoes. They all have completely different types of hangers though. So I'm trying to remove what they have so that I can kind of give them like uniform hangers. And then I wanna use that black and white buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree. So just cut all of those off. The snowshoes, I just tied off the leather straps shorter. And then I'm just gonna use twine on all of them so they'll kind of all have a matching way to attach to our little ribbon. And my shelves for my coffee bar aren't very wide, so it's gonna be a very short pendant banner. And I'm just gonna use that twine to tie off, like right here in the middle. I thought the snowflake would look really cute in the middle. Once I get this all put together, I kind of realized that the ski lift was red. I probably should have painted it blue, but it's such a little piece. I think it turned out okay. I just didn't want to be too colorful, you know, because I was going for that black and white theme. But then of course I had to throw in blue. <laughs> but it's okay, I like it the way it turned out. So just tying all three of those onto our little pennant banner. 
they were a little wobbly. I was a little afraid that they weren't gonna hang right. So once I do get them all tied on, I don't have them tied on tightly. So I do go in and I use a little bit of um, hot glue just to make sure that they're not gonna go anywhere and they will stay right where they should be. So I kind of like how the snowflake is. And then I'm just going to uh, measure about six inches in between each one. And that way we can glue them in place. They, I also use a little bit of hot glue when I hang this. I find that it works a lot better than tacks or anything that I've used before. And it's pretty easy to remove from my shelf. Okay, I hung the sign and I hung the pennant banner and we are ready to build a coffee bar. Let's do it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like, comment your favorite project below, and don't forget to hit subscribe. Until next time, everybody, happy crafting. Bye bye.